Money. Well, everybody get full? That's, that's all I've done this weekend is eat. Uh, dang, I tell you, they did a heck of a job. I, I, that's, I tell you. Got a chance to go to the... Uh, The grave today, Bill Wilson's, oh my gosh. You know, I kept thinking this. I have this overriding thing, this thought the whole time we were there. I went over there twice today and I had a chance to visit with some nice folks from different parts of the country. And You know, but I had the same thing. What if, what if Bill Wilson had um, just decided to do something different? You know, like screw AA. I don't want to play this game anymore. What would have happened? I mean, I, I look at my life and how... How, how connected this whole thing has become. Um, how my life and my twin brother's life and my wife's life and, oh my gosh, I, I just, I don't know, folks. We spend a lot of time in treatment talking about the damages that alcohol has caused us and the drugs and the, the you know, it's just the mountains of stuff that has taken place as a result of our using. And the truth of the matter is, guys, the minute we start breathing a sober breath, we start sending little ripples of success out there in the universe. I mean, how many people are we going to affect? How many people did Bill Wilson affect because he got sober 1935? He finally accepted some guidance from Ebby and said, okay, dang it, I don't think this will work, but I'm going to give this a shot. You follow? And he, and he started heading towards the light. And how many people, how many millions of us have been affected in all the different fellowships as a result of that? Same kind of stuff. We sit in here and we have this, seem to have this attitude that we can't help anybody. That, that we're just one little person here and blah, you know, all I can help is, is myself. And I mean, I hear that, that, that happy horse <laughs> until the cows come home. And so I, I want to talk a little bit tonight uh, uh, specifically about sponsorship and stuff. And it's the same, I want to use the same disclaimer I used earlier, please. Um, uh, this is from my experience, and my experience may differ from your experience, and that's perfectly okay with me. I, I, uh, there's some great guides on sponsorship out there. Uh, Joe and Charlie's done some stuff. Alcoholics Anonymous has got some pretty good stuff. I'm not a big fan of their little brochure. A question and answers on sponsorship. I know a lot of you guys live and die by it. They left out one thing in that brochure, like work the steps. But besides that, <laughs> besides that, they got it just about right. And um, oh my gosh, we're gonna be so socially correct. We're 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 useless. I uh, I want to come. I want to come from a of, of a place of working the steps with a. We were talking about earlier today with a with a with a newcomer. Uh, not not somebody that's been sober a while. I get asked a lot. I sponsor a whole bunch of guys, and, and a lot of the guys I get to sponsor are people that have been sober for a period of time. You're with us, and they're looking for a new experience, or maybe their sponsors died. And I'm going to take somebody that's been sober 10 years, and I'm going to do things a little different with them than I am for somebody that's been sober about 10 minutes. Make make Because it, it's different. Nine times out of ten, if I'm dealing with somebody that's been sober for a period of time and they're in a in a like a, a kind of an uncomfortable spot or not feeling really good about themselves, whatever, nine times out of ten, it's about a piece of dishonesty that they're not doing. They've either never worked the steps or they've worked the steps and now they've stopped working the steps and then untreated alcoholism is coming back and kicking their butt. Remember earlier we were talking about the amount of medications that are floating around this country right now and basically in our fellowship, we're seeing it time and time again. You'll follow? People taking meds for... To, to treat this internal discomfort, which is nothing more than untreated alcoholism. So a lot of times with a guy that's been sober a while, it's just getting back on track and let's let's do another four step and let's bring some things current. You'll follow, and that's the way it is. Usually, it's a piece of dishonesty. But if you show me somebody that's having trouble feeling goofy in sobriety, and I'll show you somebody that's being dishonest in certain areas of their life. Sex and checks comes to mind. <laughs> um, I know, I know. Everybody gets a little goofy. I've done a lot of I've done a lot of these little little sponsorship deals, guys. And some of y'all have heard me read this. Is a uh, uh, I uh, 
this is in a box four five nine article in in, in two thousand. I it's just all raggly. If I lose it, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess they've got archival stuff. I can I can retrieve it. But Jesus, it's this is a great little piece here. It says inner group ask where have the volunteers gone? I thought this was really good coming straight out of New York, you know, which is AA mecca as far as we're concerned. The most frustrating thing about answering inner group's phone says Bob R, manager of the inner group association in New York City, is finding an AA member willing to take a twelve step call for some sick alcohol who phoned us for help. Can, y'all with me? Yeah. This is our... Oh my gosh. Sometimes it takes us up to 20 calls to identify just one willing volunteer. Some of the responses we hear when a live member actually does answer the phone. What's a 12-step call? How did you get my phone number? Do you mean you actually want me to talk to someone who's still drinking? The saddest response came from a member who exclaimed, No, I can't do it. I'm busy all day. Today is my sobriety anniversary. Oh, man. We, but we see it every day. Y'all understand where, where we're at with this. It's like, like Bill Wilson had this barn burning spiritual experience, and I hear people all the time say, Well, you know, we're not going to have spiritual experiences like Bill Wilson had. Let me tell you something. If you worked the steps as fast as Bill Wilson worked them, I bet you would have an experience much similar to what Bill Wilson had. We see it time and time again. This whole process was intended to be worked at a pretty good clip. I don't know why. And how we have gotten so far off the page with this nonsense. You talk to any of the old timers, if you get a chance to talk to somebody that's 50 plus years sober, talk to them and ask them about this, guys. You may get a, 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 a different reading than I got, but I've talked to a bunch of these old geezers. Some of them are dead now, but they got really down close and personal. We worked the steps really, really quick. Because we knew we were really, really going to die if we didn't. That was a quote from a guy out in Seattle. And that's what this is about. We want to take a process that was supposed to be worked really quick so that you can have this dynamic experience. And we want to drag it out. Steps four through nine. We do a third step prayer, right? We get up. We launch under the course of vigorous action, the book says. Steps four through nine is what makes the miracle take place. We, we, we do a four step and then sit on it for six months. Well, I'm, go, I'm fixing to do a fifth step. You with us? Now all the momentum you got. I was just out there listening to the gym do some work with some of the guys. How cool it is to see somebody actually do some work with some guys, you know? And he's talking about this, these steps and, and how momentum is the key. Let's get these cats through the work. And, um, and you dump a fifth step and you get up in six and seven and an hour later, bum, and you got your list and you go start making amends. Who could not have an experience with this? It'll, it'll blow you out of the water. But so many people don't do that. We've, we've, my guys in my sponsorship lineage talk about compartmentalizing everything. We, we take everything up and we study it individual little steps and we forget the fact that this whole dang thing was supposed to be worked all at once. We live in 10, 11, and 12. We can work the steps again for another experience so we don't have to live off an experience we had years ago. You follow? But initially, this is supposed to be rather rapid rapid business. I got this email from this cat in California, and he sent it to me. And um, I'd like to read you the whole thing, but I'd be in trouble if I did because you, you might know who it is. This guy was out for a long time. He was, he was sober for a long, long time, and he drank again. Anyway, he comes back in, and he got another sponsor. And he, and he said, I came back to AA. By Memorial Day, I wondered why. I found a sponsor that had me read Bill's story for an entire month of May. Oh, shit. Let me see if I can find that in here. In the directions, the program of action. It, it's got to be there. We never worked a single step. When he announced he was leaving for vacation for a month and a half, my instructions were to read the doctor's opinion over and over until he got back. So, how? (laughs) Again, remember earlier we talked about it. There's some people that could do this and get away with it. That's fine. If it's a progressive illness and if you're early in the illness or maybe not even one of us, you can read the whole book backwards if you want to. I don't, I don't know. Take your time. But if you're the real McCoy, the clock's ticking and the window's closing and you're in trouble if you don't do this. Make sense? I gotta say something and key off something Chris said earlier. He's, you know, you, you think, I don't know how to explain it. Do you think you know the day, what the day is gonna look like that you drink again? I mean, my sponsor talks about it. Do you think you have anything to do with your next relapse? 
If I'm not doing the work, this is not going to, like he so aptly put it, you know, little timer, danger, Will Robinson, danger, five more days till relapse, self-destruct, you know, and it's like, how cool would that be? Because then we could all ride that. But we don't know that. Everything's fine. Remember that line in Bill, in, uh, excuse me, in Fred the Businessman over in the stories uh, from 23 to 43. There's some great stories there. And it's one of the best lines in the book. It says, it was the end of a perfect day. Not a cloud on the horizon. <laughs> I mean, God, well, God, how many of us in here have gotten squashed at the end of a perfect day? Not a cloud on the horizon. Everything was going perfect in this guy. And the next paragraph, he, he, he makes the ultimate mistake. He walks across the threshold of a dining room. Didn't he know that that's the worst trigger that you could possibly <laughs> Oh, God. I can't believe that we sit in meetings and let people even say the word trigger. It is so much. I know it. I am being good. Sitting there to think in the day, though, when we were sitting there down there with the, at the at the cemetery and uh, and. Uh, uh, looking at the graves and thinking about Dr. Bob and Bill and the things they went through and the early guys in Alcoholics Anonymous. Y'all realize there were some great articles in the grapevine that talked about the old historic stuff. They made every mistake you could make. Y'all understand that? I mean, they, these guys stepped on themselves. Every time they turned around, they were walking into another cul-de-sac. I mean, they made every mistake you could possibly make so that we don't have to make the same mistakes. Why is it that we have to think that we have to reinvent the wheel? That's why it drives me crazy when I hear somebody in a meeting. I mean, Chris Raymer is always the controversial one because he's saying what? Work the steps out of the book quickly. <gasps> I know, ooh, I know, really. <laughs> really. And yet somebody can sit in a meeting and say, you know, take your time and just go to meetings, but that's perfectly okay to say that. Y'all understand that? I, I, got, I got to say this and it's off topic. I got this letter in the mail. I got this. I got this letter in the mail. And Myers and I were laughing about it because he got the same letter. We were supposed to be speaking at this conference out in California, and actually, I got three total letters from this conference when we were going to speak, telling us one what to wear, what what to as far as no cussing, how to b- behave, specific uh, guidelines on. In other words, don't come up here from Texas and embarrass us. We don't care what you talk about. You follow what I'm saying? You can you can talk about anything you want to. Just make sure that you're dressed appropriately and don't cuss. I mean, I just think our I just think our our, our priorities have gotten a little skewed here. I understand that. Let's let's set some parameters. Three letters to make this clear point. I wore a t-shirt and cussed like a sailor. I guarantee you that. I, No, I didn't. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But it was a good story, wasn't it? I don't know. What happens is I'm going to ask these little guys. When I sponsor somebody, I'm asking them, and we're teaching them stuff. And basically, they're going to go out, and when they're looking for a sponsor, when any of you guys say, here's what you need to be looking for. I, it's so funny to watch you guys. Some of you guys go shopping. You spend longer looking for a microwave oven than you do for a sponsor. You know, you watch the newcomer come in. The chairperson tells a little funny story, and all, and they got to line up a little guys. Can you sponsor me? You know, I saw your nice brand-new pickup in the parking lot. And, you know, this is your – walk up to the cat and say, excuse me. Have you had a spiritual experience as a result of working the 12 steps? You'll follow? You're going to get exactly two responses. No middle of the ground. They're either going to walk backwards, crawfish in, clack, 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 like a, you know, <laughs> back into a corner. Oh, stay away from me. Or they're going to go say, where in the hell did you hear that? Come on, let's go. Y'all follow? Because that's what it's about. Let me ask you a question. Why would anybody in this room want somebody to sponsor them that hadn't had a spiritual experience as a result of working the steps? I mean, this is for free and for fun. Why would you want to have somebody messing with your life that didn't have what you needed? You can go buy your own therapist. You can get you a lawyer or a doctor. But what we need is somebody that knows how to have a spiritual experience as a result of the steps to keep us current. What's a sponsor supposed to do, guys? A sponsor's main job is to, is I think as far as I'm concerned, is threefold. It's, it's one is to show you how to work the 12 steps. Would you all agree? I mean, our main function is to show you how to work the steps. Was this guy in California, did he have the right sponsor? I mean, this guy wasn't trying to show him how to work the steps. This guy was keeping him busy 
so he could go on with his life. I really don't have time to mess with you, son. Why don't you read a bit and I'll get back to you? That's not sponsorship. Y'all understand? Am I not am I knocking the reading? Hell, have him read. The book says, let's have the guy read the literature. I'm down with that. In the process, though, let's get down to brass tacks and try to help this kid work the steps. That's what it's about. I'm supposed to, my job, if I'm sponsoring you, is to get you through the steps as quick as possible. That's my job. Do I think that I know, again, when you're going to relapse? How much time do I have here? Well, it's not a race. We didn't get sick overnight. We're not going to get well overnight. How do you know that? How do you know that? Bill Wilson did. Dr. Bob did. The first... I did. Within two weeks, the obsession to, to use it lifted. I know a bunch of y'all in this room that have had the same similar experiences. I think it's just pretty arrogant of us to think that it's going to take forever. This is not therapy. Guys... Some people, they misunderstand what we're, when we're talking from the podium about this. I had a spiritual experience two weeks in and the obsession lifted. Now, that's my story. A few months later, I was able to get off all medications. That's my story. I've spent a long time, guys, still working on character defects in my life and, and making some changes. I didn't get two weeks, like, perfect. I mean, I it took me a while to get this good. You know, I mean, I... <laughs> I'll understand. Uh, everybody, everybody. It's just going to take some time, guys. But the, but the spiritual experience is what, what we're after. The, 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 the freedom from the bondage of this alcoholism and drug addiction business. That's what we're after. This, this can happen quick. And, and like I said, if you, if you don't have time going in the door to, to help somebody, then don't offer to begin with. But understand that the book is quite clear. If you don't give it away, you ain't going to be able to keep it yourself. That's what it's, and nobody gets nobody gets off the off the page here. Everybody gets a chance to play. First job is to get them through the steps. Second job, I believe, is to teach the the uh, the little newcomer about the fellowship. Y'all understand about that? The traditions. What what is the, what is this meeting stuff? We assume that the little newcomer walks in the door and knows what to do, and I think that's a stupid assumption. For any of us working with newcomers, if you're three days sober sitting in this room right now and you go back to your meeting tomorrow night, you look at the door and watch for a newcomer to come in. You may not be able to sponsor that cat because you haven't finished the steps, but you can damn sure show them where the bathroom is. It's a, it's a job that, 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 is, that is worthy of your time. What it's a big book. How much is the coffee? You with us? Can you share? Can you not share? Who, who are the predators in here? Who do we need to stay away from? What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? When are we going to start understanding that our job is to, is to help this little newcomer get comfortable in our rooms? I mean, I watch it in our own, in our own fellowship, my own group in Ingram. We have a tendency to, to click off in little groups. And a little newcomer comes in and he kind of looks around and everybody's just kind of off in their own little groups talking and visiting. Man, I tell you, the guys I sponsor, I'm watching them. I saw the newcomer come in. I'm, tr I'm a master at it. I've never seen you in my group. You're a newcomer. I'm watching. And I'm going to count, buddies. And if I can get up to a little bit here and nobody of my little lineage is over there in front of that newcomer, and I don't care if it's a man or a female. I don't care. If they're not over there, we're going to have a talk after the meeting. What the hell are you doing in my meeting? Taking up a seat? What's your job? What's your primary purpose? Make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Everybody's walking on eggshells. Everybody's walking on eggshells. We're so afraid that we're going to offend somebody. We're going to piss somebody off. What happens if I make him mad? <laughs> you may save his life. <laughs> Listen, I'm not trying to be mean or, or heavy-handed or, or that, but it's not okay for you to sit in a meeting and not help the newcomer. We've, we've, got, we've got problems in AA. We've got problems in all of our other sister fellowships, all for the same thing. We think this is a free ride, guys, and it's just not. It's been my experience. When I stopped accepting it like it was a free ride, I got well. We teach these stuff about the traditions. Why is this a lost art? Talk to the newcomer about the traditions and their eyes glaze over. Why is that? As a re as in the process of teaching me about the 12 steps, they also started teaching me about the traditions. And, and an introductory, uh, introductory thing towards the concepts. Still complicated for me. Y'all understand yeah, it's just it's a process about what the the service structure. What's the difference between area and district? What's the difference in Texas between a group and a club? Mm -hmm. You'll follow? Mm -hmm. Do I have to be a member to come to a meeting here? 
No. But if you want to go follow, they don't do much of that up here north. But south, clubs are everywhere. And we are supposed to tell the newcomer about that, about the fellowship. It's a simple thing to do. One of the things that we talk about after that is a thing called... Oh, do I, I don't know if I want to go here or not. A A etiquette. <laughs> Boy, and I'm just so not rigid about this, guys. But I mean, it's just, it's it's like I don't, you know, I don't adhere with groups that say that you've got to put a tie on to even come into the group and all that. We make it so rigid that nobody, you know, that nobody can get well for heaven's sakes. We come off the street for heaven's sakes. But guys, there's some rights and there's some wrongs in our fellowship. And why don't? Why are we so so? hesitant so 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 hesitant to talk and talk to people about this tell the little newcomer what's going on what's this deal about being not on time mm-hmm. conferences were coming and going i'm not talking about that but in an aa meeting it's been starting at eight o'clock every night for the last 75 years <laughs> you'll follow mm-hmm. but, but you can't seem to get your butt out of the coffee room and into your seat before the meeting starts well what difference does it make nothing Unless you're chairing the meeting or speaking or a scared newcomer, nothing's wrong as you clump in from the back in your fashionable big heeled shoes. Y'all understand? With jewelry all up your arms so every time you move to scratch, you make enough noise to to wake the dead. (laughs) Y'all understand? Some of you women aren't laughing. God. Some of you men aren't either. I know, I know, it's the same thing. Come on, guys. Dress appropriate. It's an AA meeting, for Christ's sake. It's Dress appropriate. I don't know about you guys up north because it's so cold. Y'all wear about 15,000 layers. Down in south, they, they show up at meetings in practically nothing. And the women do it and the guys do it and then we wonder why it's so much trouble. I, I, I hear it all the time. Those guys, they're all looking at me like I'm a whore. <laughs> Well, when you stop dressing like one. Okay, so. It's a meeting and there's newcomers here. Y'all understand what we're saying now, guys? Come on. Just dress appropriately. Pay attention to what you're doing. You guys come in there like that. You look like you just walked it off out of a dumpster. And, 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 we're, and we're supposed to be given a representation of what this program is about. You don't. What does it take to clean up a little bit before you come in? I think it's important. New people may not. Old timers, they appreciate it. I had a lady hug me one time because I got up to speak in a little AA group and I walked in. I always wear a tie from the podium, usually in a coat. And I walked in like that and this lady, she just said, I cannot thank you for showing some respect for the fellowship. Y'all understand that? I didn't do it for you. I did it for her. We should all do it. Commitments. Everybody in Alcoholics Anonymous... Everybody in Alcoholics Anonymous gets a commitment. Everybody. If you've been around this fellowship for a month and you don't have a commitment, if I'm sponsoring you, we're going to have a talk. You know what the talk means? I'm going to mention this several times in here. The talk is this. You're not going to say a damn word. Okay? <laughs> because we're not going to... Be, I'm, I'm going to get pretty directional and pretty rigid about this. A commitment. Y'all know what a commitment is? Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit here, but a commitment's not, you know, well, I'm going to, I'm going to show up to my home group. I don't, so am I. Fruitcake. What's your commitment when you get here? You'll follow? Maybe picking up cigarette butts out in the parking lot. You'll follow, take, keep making sure that the church gets clean before and after we leave. Setting up chairs, making the coffee, getting the snacks out. Whatever the heck it is that every group's different, you're going to have a commitment. Again, I'm going to go back to why do we think that we get a free ride in this? Because every minute that I'm helping you be comfortable in here, doing what I can do for the group, I'm not thinking about my own self. Y'all follow? 62, selfish and self-centeredness, that we think is the root of the problem. You think you can come in here having a bad day and I just want to be alone. I just want to sit here and think. No. 
no, we don't want you to do that. <laughs> we want you to help. We want you to get involved in this business. And that's what that's about. I'm going to talk to the newcomers about this chanting business in Alcoholics Anonymous. I know some of the other fellowships do it, but in AA, we don't chant. Y'all follow? It may, be, it may be okay in your group that you're in. If that's the case, delete this piece. But in most groups, when you're out there, it's a really tough thing to do. Y'all know what I'm talking about, chanting? Uh, come on. When they read how it works, read how they don't do it up here? Oh, my gosh. They do it all over the South. They read how it works. One, everybody in unison. And they, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol. It allows to become unmanageable. Two, and everybody jumps in and it's like chanting. Oh, my God. If you, if you want to put a big, like a target on your back saying, I just got out of a stupid treatment center, chant. <laughs> That's where they learn it, okay? But in AA, we don't do it. Patty's back there explaining why we do that. That's exactly right. <laughs> One of the things I'm going to add to, guys, real quick. If I'm sponsoring somebody and I'm working with them, and the, from day one, we're going to talk about health. We're going to talk about health and exercise. Y'all follow? Because one of the saddest things that I see in AA today is that we've got a lot of people coming in here believing that not drinking one stupid day at a time is the key to success. And the problem is a lot of us, we've gotten into some really bad habits. And we're not doing some things that we really need to be doing. Y'all follow? Exercise. Everybody that I sponsor is going to get. It's not in the book. Don't even look. The, the, the book says the, our bodies are that are badly burned. You know, we don't heal overnight. And I'm going to try to do everything that we can do to help you guys heal overnight because I think it's a it's it's just one of those deals. We're going to start eating right. We're going to talk about your exercise program. We're going to talk about your health. Anybody that's in here that's not taking vitamins and fish oil should be. Especially if you're doing those little outside issues that we don't talk about in AA, fish oil will help that stuff. It'll help those little synapses start hitting on all cylinders again instead of just arcing. Some of you guys, you're like you're like bug zapper. You're just you're you're not all here yet. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's like, it's like that vacancy sign on Motel Hell. <laughs> that's what that's about. That's what that's about. We're going to try to help you do that. We're going to set some parameters. When I sit down, you guys come up here and you're going to ask me to sponsor you. First things first, we're going to ask some parameters. First thing I want to know is, why in the heck do you want me to sponsor you? Because I don't want to do this trophy sponsor stuff. You know, I speak out there in public. Well, I want you to sponsor because you're the only one that can help me. I want to know what this is about before we get in the door. You will follow? Because everybody's got a reason. Everybody's got a reason. And we're going to sit and have a conversation at the beginning. Guys, the conversations and all the paperwork and all the discussion should happen at the very beginning. Because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of this conversation and paperwork downstream. You follow? Well, I thought you meant, well, I assumed that. And we're going to go on and on and on. And I'm going to tell you going in the door what I can give you and what I can't give you. Y'all follow? If you read that little brochure, brochure question and answers, it starts to tell you in a bunch of stuff that most sponsors. Why don't people want to sponsor? Let me ask you that question first. You ask anybody in Alcoholics Anonymous that's not sponsoring, let's ask them point blanks. Why don't you want to sponsor somebody? What are they going to say? Amen. Amen. Y'all, would y'all agree? Yes. Number one reason that people don't want to sponsor. Honey, I'd love to help you, but I just don't have the time right now. You follow? Here's the problem. Are you busy? Yes. Do you have the time? You could make a little time to do what we're talking about here. What you can't, what you don't have the time to do is take them on to race. And that's the biggest mistake we make with the people in Alcoholics Anonymous is that we have this idea that a sponsor's job, again, because of a lot of the literature that's been written, is to take these people on to race. Let me tell you point blank. If I'm sponsoring Chris Schroeder, I can assure you I'm not taking him on to race. My job is to get him through the steps, get him to God as quick as possible, and let's move on. I'm going to sponsor you. I'm going to get you connected spiritually. I'm going to bump you to the side. I'm going to hold you accountable after that. And I'm going to move on and find me another guy to work with. It's like my brother gives this analogy the best. And he probably stole it from somebody else. But I think it's a great analogy. He ta it's like raising kids. I've never had any kids, but I've watched a lot of you people raise kids. And it's like when your little babies are little small and you'll bring them into the meetings. And you can't, you're talking, but you're watching that kid. It's just 24-7 kid. You, intensive. As they get older... They're out there playing in the next room and you're listening for them. You're watching them, but you're not, as, you're not there 24-7. That's exactly. By the time they guys get to high school, you're good to see them once a week. Hey, buddy, what's up? Check, yeah, peace, love. I know I love peace, all that gang. 
Oh, like Patty's teaching me gang signs, and we're we're going. <laughs> But y'all understand what I'm talking about. That's exactly how it should be with his sponsorship deal. We've got guys out there that are being so. That's my sponsee. You stay away from him. Oh, what? Y'all follow? Listen, let's get this straight real quick, guys. If you get hold of a sponsor and you like this guy, you may keep him the rest of your life. You may get a sponsor, and if, if it decides that it's not working out, this is what you need to do. Hey, buddy, thanks so much for your help. This ain't working out for me. B- Bye-bye. 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 Turn around and walk away. You'll follow? If the guy gets pissed, you know you've made the right decision. Come on, guys. Every single one of you that get a chance to... that I've, I know a bunch of you. I mean... God drops people in our life and they, t- and they take these people away and some of us, we get to be lifelong friends forever and ever. That's what this is about. We, we're, we're buddies. And if I can help Chris, I want to help him as long as I can. And, it, and it, he goes find somebody else and that's, that's just the way it works. We spiritually outgrow people. We change. We move. We need different people. Y'all, y'all understand where I'm at? This idea that a sponsee is yours for keeps forever, this is, this is your, your BS. And it's wrong. It's wrong. We're getting a bad name out there, guys. That's the stuff that gives us the cult image. You see it, you see it on the news all the time. You know, the AA deal. and all, that, that, These are my people. Uh-uh. Buddy, if you find... I get fired all the time, guys. In the parameter, in the, in the initial talk, when, I, when we get together, I tell them, I travel 40 weekends out of the year. I am often... Not home. If you need somebody to be there to wipe your butt twenty four seven, you need to go find somebody else, and I'll help you because I got some guys that that like to wipe butts. Okay, <laughs> I, y'all understand what I mean. I know some guys that were there, that they have all the time in the world, or maybe just they don't have a lot going on in their life right now, and they could use some time. So let's let's hook you up with them. But if you want me to sponsor you, I'm not going to be there every twenty seconds for you. Just not. Make sense. I'm going to be there and I can promise you I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Other than that, buddy, y'all cool with that? It's okay to fire a sponsor, folks. Mm -hmm. Move on. This is life and death. You know who has trouble with this, guys? The the people that I see in the fellowship that have the biggest trouble with this are women because y'all become so attached at the hip. You know, y'all become very good friends and I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't want to hurt her feelings. Oh, that's great. So you'd rather die in the process. If, the, if somebody gets sick or somebody pulls away and somebody's not giving you, feeding you the way you need to be fed, it, you need to move on. You can still have them as a friend until the cows come home. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Not personal. It's just not personal. It's perfectly okay to do that. The number one call, I've said it from a million podiums out there, the number one call I get from people out there in AA land are, are women looking for women sponsors. I said it last night. There are a lot of sober women in Alcoholics Anonymous, and most of them don't have the time of day to help a newcomer get well. They can tell you the best place to buy Bed Bath & Beyond stuff, but they can't tell you how to finish a fourth step. And you can take personal offense at that if you want to. That's just my experience. They, they, they go to lunch, they, li- they do this, they do all this, they, 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 they go get their nails done once a week, and they're, just, they're so, you know what I'm saying? But you're sitting on a, 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 a stockpile of amends that you haven't made yet, and they won't get you off dead center. And they need some guidance. We, guys, we're teachers here. We're trying to help people have spiritual experiences. Get your own damn friend. A sponsor does, you don't need that with a sponsor. Make sense? It may grow into that. I said it last night. I've got some guys that I sponsor. I probably sponsor 30 guys. Some of those guys that I sponsor, I, I tell you, we're thick as thieves. We're best friends. And some of the guys I sponsor, we're not friends at all. I said it again. I don't even want them knowing where I live. I, I'm getting them through the work. But, but the little crackheads, I ain't. No. 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 Not yet. Maybe later, but not, not now. <laughs> we're going to we're going to sit down at that little first meeting and I'm going to explain to this that I don't have a bunch of time to be doing this. I want them to call me. I want them to get to know them as much as possible. I'm going to spend some time with them. But my main job is to get them through the steps quickly. So if they're not willing to give me some time, you with us, to get through this work at a pretty quick quick pace, then I'm not going to work with them. Well, I'm kind of busy right now. You know, my schedule's kind of tangled up and and you know like, you know, it's like I don't know if I'm going to have the time to do this work right now. It's Bye-bye. 
Bye bye. Good night. I'll see you later. Bye bye. Now we'll go go away because I'm not going to sit here and sit on the sidelines while you die. Mm. Urgency. The book says we seek the solution with the desperation of a drowning man. Where's the desperation? As long as I can see the desperation in you, and you're ready to do this, and you want to seek God, I'm going to come. Up, I'm I'm going to go out of my way to make time for you to sh- to teach you how to do this. You follow? If I see the desperation go and you start coming up with a bunch of stupid excuses why you can't get this work finished, I gave you two weeks to finish your fourth step, which is longer than I give most, and now you want to come back and tell me that you can't finish it? What? What? We're going to have the talk. The talk. <laughs> that means where you get quiet and I'm going to talk. What was it about this urgency didn't you understand? Well, I just don't have time. This came up, that came up. Uh-uh. Bye-bye. You don't want to play? I'll see you later. Make sense? That's too rigid. No, it's not. No, it's not. Because I, I care. I give a shit. Mm. Guys, the opposite of love is not hate. It's indifference. And this is what we become in a fellowship. Well, he just didn't want to do the work. Uh-huh. Did you get in his face? Did you ask him why he didn't want to do the work? Did you try to hold him accountable? Well, no, I don't think it's my place. I'm not going to chase him. Listen, listen, guys. At least paint the clear picture for him to begin with. The last thing we're going to do is chase drunks. But... but but did you get serious with the guy? Did you get straight with him? Did, did you leave the room with him thinking that everything was perfectly okay? Make sense, guys? The clock's ticking. The guy's dying. And he wants to, he wants to tell you how we're going to do this? No, excuse me. You said you wanted what I had. I don't want a damn thing you got. Maybe your car. <laughs> I let him know that we're going to do this thing quick. Here's the timeline, guys. It's about 30 days. If these guys are not actively working their amends and practicing the disciplines of 10, 11, and 12 in 30 days, I'm not willing to mess with them. Y'all understand that? Because if they don't have the urgency to do this, why am I messing with them? One of the biggest problems that we have, we talked about last night is that in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, is that we're picking, picking them too green. Y'all know that expression? Mm. Yeah, we're picking them too green. We're jamming people into the program and, and, and pushing harder than they're pulling. And, and, and it's backfiring on us. Big Bill Wilson was explicit in his writings about this. Dr. Bob was huge about this. He was the sponsor's sponsor. But he understood that we don't chase drunks. Would you like to go through the 12 steps of action and have a spiritual experience that will change your life forever? Well, gosh, you know, I'm just... How about you? Would you like to... Well, wait a minute. I'm not finished. Yes, you are. Because if there's some hesitation on your... Why are we wasting our time? Let me ask you a question. Because there's a bunch of y'all in here I know real well. And I'm, and I'm just going to say, all of y'all think about the people that you're sponsoring. Isn't it that you've got like one or two people that you're spending 90% of your time with? And the other guys get very little of your time because you're too busy messing with messing with these guys that don't want it anyway. This is time that we did this with them. Call me when you get ready. Because we got double standards here. I jammed you through the work and you did everything I asked you to do and here you are my shining star. You follow? But this guy I'm letting sit on his ass for week after week after week and do nothing. Uh Uh-uh. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have time to mess with that. I want to go get me somebody, another shining star. That's what this is about. It sounds rigid, doesn't it? But, it's, it, but, but, but this is not a game for us. There's only so many hours in the day. Alcoholics Anonymous was never intended to be some kind of a, 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 a substitute for life. Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob and those first guys, they all understood this. AA was supposed to, to, to enrich your life, make it better, add to your life. We're not supposed to be hiding out in a bunch of stupid meetings. 90 meetings in 90 days. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Alcoholics Anonymous, sooner or later, better get off that because that's the stuff that makes it sound like a cult. If you go to meetings every day, you can say, listen, I'm not knocking meetings. you got to go to meetings. That's where we're going to go find a sponsor and new people to work with. That's what it's about. Makes sense? You're spending... N- n- oh. <laughs> You got kids you haven't seen in weeks. You're busting your ass working two jobs trying to make ends meet and you're trying to make a meeting every day. Why? How bad do you want to stay sober? And you wonder why you, you fail miserably. Y'all understand where we're at with this? Okay, my time's busy. Travel. 
my, a, a relationship that I'd love dearly and would like to keep. Exercise, health, job, every. But I got some meetings to go to too. And I'm going to give you some time if you want it. But I'm not going to beg you and I'm not going to chase you. Does that make sense, guys? Mm-hmm. I don't fire alcoholics. But in the last talk I'm going to have with you, I'm going to suggest very strongly that you find somebody that you might identify with more than me because I don't have time to mess with you. You want to play this game with me? Come on on the path? Or you want to keep doing what you're doing? I'll do it. I'll do it. I want you to stay with me. Let's go. Y'all follow, guys? Don't want to fire anybody. But I'm just not going to waste my time with somebody that doesn't want it. We don't chase drunks. That's the bottom line. I have a group of men in uh, uh, in my uh, home group uh, that we uh, we got together years ago. We started a group called Mad Dogs, and um, uh, we drank like mad dogs. Some of you guys in here, Jim, where is Jim? Becky? Jim, he, you're a mad dog. Okay. <laughs> Come on, guys, we're all fiends. I mean, we're all drinking drug like this. We're, when we were out there, coming to a meeting, listen, we start talking about the stuff we did out there. And he's talking about lighting cars on fire and the lights in his eyes like he was looking at Pamela Anderson. You know, he's like, ah, oh, oh, we're mad dogs, guys. So we come into recovery and all of a sudden we get blase. You follow? Uh-uh. I, do, I, did, I drank and drug like a mad dog. I'm going to do recovery like a mad dog. And I'm not going to walk on eggshells around a bunch of sensitive people out there tiptoeing, pretending that this whole thing doesn't exist. Make sense? That's what we do with this Mad Dog. It's, we, it's, it, our group is called Mad Dogs on a road less traveled. We've got little t-shirts. These are the guys that are on my sponsorship lineage. I'll send you the format. You can use it with the people you sponsor. Because what was happening is in our sponsorship lineage, we were finding that we were running out of time. I sponsor 10 guys, and they sponsor you know little guys, and they sponsor little guys. And all of a sudden, you've got a whole bunch of people heading in the same direction, but we're not able to meet all together. And the deal is, is that if you can't reach me, you can reach one of these other little Mad Dogs, and they can help you. So if you're there on a Thursday night and I'm traveling and your butt's coming unraveled, we got a little list of little mad dogs and you look on that list and call somebody and you've got somebody to talk to. Makes sense? In this mad dog meeting, it's a little account. Y'all, y'all heard Steel on Steel? Yes. Mark and, and Joe Hawk and those little guys that, that's been around forever. This is a little mini version of Steel on Steel. It's a little accountability. And uh, the, the, the original version that Mark and them used was just way too long for me. It's, I have a very short attention span. And quite frankly, I don't want to meet with you for four hours in a night. I mean, I, I love you, but I'd rather be home watching slasher movies. So let's... let's this is a, we get 40 people in this group, and we divide into little groups. We have a little meeting at the beginning, and then we divide into groups, and within an, in an hour, we've done a little steel on steel. It's a pretty, and we count around each time. We, every other Thursday, we meet. It's a pretty cool little deal so that you end up with different people every time. So the more people you get to know, how about that idea, huh? I, it's nice that I did a fist step with you and you know me inside and out. Now I've done a fist step with everybody in the room and everybody knows who, what a bozo I am. You want to talk about freedom? It's a pretty cool thing. In my sponsorship lineage, guys, in my little Mad Dog group, we introduce ourselves with first and last name. Dr. Bob was crystal clear about the tradition, folks, and he understood this, this deal with anonymity at a group level is ridiculous. Redi- you're welcome to use it if you want to. My name is Chris R., That's great until you start to relapse and you need to call me on the phone and you don't have a way to reach Chris R. My name is Chris Raymer and I live in Ingram, Texas. If you ever need me, you can call me in the stupid old information and I'll pick up the phone. Full name. Want everybody to know. You know what? We ended up doing this. I was sober about six months and the guy that I was working with had a, a heart attack and we went to the hospital so that we could help him and we couldn't go see him. There wasn't a person in our AA group in Louisville, Texas that could get in to see this guy who was having a heart attack and help his family because not a person in the room knew his last name. How stupid is that? When I'm on the movies, guys, when people from TV stations want to do interviews with me, it's Chris R. Mm-hmm. Anonymous. Mm-hmm. No personalities in this. At the level of group, buddy. We give our sobriety date. We give our sponsor. We talk about the number of people we're sponsoring. This is accountability. You with me? You've been in my sponsorship lineage for six months now and you're still not sponsoring anybody? we got ten guys in the group that are going to... 
tractor beam, you know. <laughs> we're we're going to find out. What What is it about this that you're not understanding? Six months sober and you're not working with anybody? What's up with that? Home group, everybody's got to have a home group. doesn't have to be an AA. Can, in my lineage, it can be in a bunch of different fellowships. We, we, we have representatives of all of those. And we're going to have one weekly commitment. So you don't have a weekly commitment this week. Great. And we're all writing notes, taking notes. You with me? Two weeks later, you come back in. Uh, and uh, I still don't have a weekly commitment. <laughs> oh, you'll do it once. You'll do it once. And then you'll have a little guy that's about two months sober. Eat your ass. You know, you'll follow what I'm saying, and you will feel about this big. I guarantee you. You've got to take it. And this steel on steel, it's accountability, right? You can't defend yourself. There's nothing to defend. You're sitting around a group. You're sober than most of the people in the room, and you still don't have a commitment. You with us? There's nothing to defend. What you need to say is, you're right, I'm wrong. I'll get one by next week. And then go do that. Buddies, let me tell you something. We lead by example. We lead by example. For me to stand up here and talk to you guys about sponsorship and not sponsor anybody, what kind of a ridiculous thing would this be? I'm not telling you to do something that I'm not willing to do. You can't talk about something that you haven't had any experience with. If you haven't worked the steps, shut up. You've got nothing to talk about. Period. But if you've worked the steps and you're sponsoring people, buddies, come on with us and help us. I've got to say this and move. The gravy of this program is sponsorship. I, I, I don't understand people that come into this fellowship and they do all the work and they get right up to that spot where you start actually getting involved in other people's lives and then stop. It's like, it's like a whole bunch of foreplay and just right before the big O, you, oh, that's, a, that's enough. I just wanted, I don't want to go there. Y'all understand? What? Well, wait, come on now. A little bit more. Just no. No, no, that's enough for me. You wouldn't do it in this part of your life either if you knew how good it was, folks. Because i got to tell you something. There's nothing better in the world than sitting down next to somebody and letting them be a part of your life. And they know you like a book and you know them like a book. Y'all understand that? And you don't have to pay catch-up every time you turn around. you sitting out there on that... I did it with Gary this, this afternoon at, at, at the gravesite. I've known him for years. And, and, and just... Just sitting there and just looking, and no, no conversation, just look and smile. And, and we have a history, and, and with Chris and, and Charlie and some of the buds in this room, and it's like we have a history. Some of you guys, you're, 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 you're missing the coolest part of this. The hardest thing I did when I got to Alcoholics Anonymous was let you into my life. Be vulnerable, let somebody close to you. And you turn around and help somebody else. And that's the way it works. Because the people that can help another alcoholic are the uh, people that have been through the torture chamber that we've been through. I'm going to say this real quick story and I'm going to let you guys split. Because y'all, uh, it's like some of y'all have been beaten. <laughs> that's been a long day. I think it's the air. Oh my gosh, I'm just like, like ready to take a nap. We... Uh, I hear people all the time, before I say this, I hear people all the time talking about sponsorship. And one of the first things they do, especially if it's in a Q&A deal, they start talking about, well, I don't think it's possible to sponsor more than one or two people effectively. And, and, I, and I, of course, I, I vehemently disagree. I don't think it's possible to sponsor more than one or two people effectively at one time. You, you follow me? Taking some people through the work at one time is intensive. It takes time to sit down and explain a four step. It takes time to hear a little fifth step and show them how to organize their eight step of list. You'll follow. But after they're through the steps, and they're bumped out the other side. Now we're going to go get another one. So, I mean, I'm not sponsoring 30 guys all at once, taking them through the steps. I've been there through that. We've kicked them to the curb now. And they're out there working with some others. And if they get in trouble, they can call me and I'm going to be there right there to help them. Does that, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Dr. Bob sponsored over 5,000 people in a 15-year period of time. Guys, I've checked the archives. I've talked to people that knew Dr. Bob personally, and they all agreed to this. They didn't sponsor somebody by taking them on to raise and getting involved in every stupid facet of their life. They got involved in sponsorship by getting them connected spiritually to God, period. They did a third-step prayer with them. They showed them how to do a fourth-step. They heard a fifth-step. They showed them how to make amends. You with us? They guided them in prayer and meditation, and they encouraged them to go out there and get some more drunks to work with. That's what we do, period. If you've got somebody that's trying to use you as a therapist, stop it, unless you happen to be a trained therapist. 
If you've got somebody in here that's trying to use you as a doctor, stop it. A lawyer, stop it. This idea that sponsorship, you have to have the answer for everything, is ridiculous, folks. This is what stops us from, from, from carrying on the tradition of sponsorship. Do you all agree? Well, I'm grateful I have the sponsor I have. I talk to her about 16 times a day, and she's my best friend, and how cool that is. Wonderful. We all have people we grow close to. I've said it before. You all with me? Don't try to set yourself up to do that with every person you sponsor, folks. I guarantee you there will come a time somebody will ask you to sponsor them that you can't stand. And you have a spiritual responsibility to take care of him anyway. Make sense? Yep. Okay. Years ago, I used to be a, a, a competitive cyclist, very poor competitive cyclist. <laughs> I, no, I mean, I've got to be honest with you. I used to say that from, I was a competitive cyclist. I suck. I have the genetic makeup of a, of a rat. And I mean, I, I got, I got a, little, a little baby heart and crappy lungs. And I mean, I'm just, I die out there. But I look good for a while. And I'm... But I was a cyclist for a long time, and I and I and I and I loved it. it was, this was in sobriety. I, I always wanted to get on one of those bikes, and I finally got sober. And, and um, I spent a lot of time in bike shops, and I knew all about bikes, but I'd never been on one. You know, it's one of those deals where I could talk a game. And I got sober finally, and the guy says, "Chris, why don't you get on one of those bikes?" And I said, "You know the, my reason why I won't get on a bike?" I says, "I got to tell you, because I don't understand. You know those little stretchy shorts?" Yeah. Every guy in here went straight to that. Yeah. You don't you don't wear underwear in those shorts. I'm just telling you now. There's, it's over. It's you don't. But I had to get sober to ask that question. You follow? Because I don't want to look stupid. The last thing I want to do is look stupid. I lay in your yard and puke straight up. That's okay. <laughs> you know? we'll, we'll light cars on fire, right, Jimmy? But we ain't. Um, but we get, we get sober now. We want to do some cool things, but we're afraid to ask. And this guy in the program, he says, Buddy, come on. I'm going to go to the bike with you, and we're going to, you ask any question you want. Anyway, I got me some stretchy britches and a nice bicycle, and I started training. I started riding with these guys. One of the mistakes that these guys made with me, I had a guy that, that, was, that was sold, actually sold me this bike. He harmed me because what he did was uh, everybody in the hills uses a certain gear ratio. And he saw that I was a little skinny mess. And so he said, but we're going to give you a different ratio because you're not as strong as these other guys. So he gave me this, this weaker set of gears. And so I'm riding with these guys. And, of course, y'all, y'all know where this is going. They're all getting better because they're pushing harder gears. And I'm a lightweight and not getting any better. And they're dropping me every time we ride. You follow? In the attempt to water this thing down, y'all follow? Make it easier for me. They've actually damaged my chances of being competitive with these guys. You follow? Stop watering the message of this program down, folks. You have no right to do that. It's in the big book. The big book says it. It's, it, it means it. This is the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. The 12 steps. It's not anything else. In the, in, the, in the course of every cyclist's life, they end up doing a, what they call a century ride. You get to ride a 100-mile ride. And it's just a mark of passage. You'll, you'll, you follow? It's like getting drunk and puking. Everybody gets to do it the first time. And everybody remembers their first time. And we went out this, this one deal. There was, was 15 or so of us. And we went out on this bike ride. And we were all going to ride 100 miles on, this, on these bikes. So, and we all set out. We knew it was going to get cold. We all had cold weather gear with us, and we all set out, and we started riding. We got out about 25 miles, and one of these blue northers came down through Texas. It didn't get cold, guys. It got downright weird out there. Y'all follow? The temperature dropped like a rock, and it started misting, and it was icing up. But we were out so far. I mean, we were way out in the hills. And so a group of people turned around and went back. We're already out pretty far. We've got some little warm-ups on and everything. And we're, we're ready to go. I said, no, man, let's finish this ride. And about 20 more miles out, we knew that we had really screwed up. You'll follow me. So much for bravado because when we were dying out here, this little ride should have been over an hour ago. And now when we're not even halfway there yet. But we're out too far to go back. And there's a group of us that said, you know what? We stopped at this little store and we ate. We were eating anything we could to get some energy because we're dying. All the food's gone. All the, all the liquid. We're bonked, all of us. We've got to get home. We want to finish this ride. We started it. Let's finish it. There's about six or seven of us. And I'm, of course, the weakest rider there. 
And so we said, he said, come on, come with us. We'll help you. And this is, guys, this is what they did. Some of y'all have heard me talk about this. But this was night. It was getting dark. And everybody in the place that was strong riders started pulling the weaker riders. Get behind me. Right close. And we we're going we to pull you. Draft. And there was one guy. One little guy had a light on the back of his bike. And he got in the very back so that the cars could see us. Because they couldn't see us. It was getting dark. And it was cold. And it was not fun. And we were dropping because it was icing and, and the bikes were sliding and we were falling on our ass. But we got back on the bikes and everybody would pull. And the weaker riders were helped by the stronger riders. At about 9 o'clock that night, we pulled in to where we started. And every odometer in the place clicked 100 miles. And there was no laughing, no patting, no just, we just all looked at each other with tears in our eyes, just like I got right now. We went into the little sports center and we all got in the little jacuzzi and we sat there and soaked our bones in the warm water. That was 10 years ago and I still see these people in town and every time I see them, we don't even have to talk. All we do is go, huh? Huh? We just, and there's a, there's a bond. Y'all know where I'm going with this? Come on, guys, for the little disco drunk that snuck in the back that doesn't even belong here, I'm not talking to you. The rest of you guys that survived the dumpsters and the prostitution and the drugs and the crazy, stupid stuff that we do, there's a bond with us. There's a bond that we understand. All we got to do is just get in the same room and smile because we know exactly what we've been through. And the therapist can't help us. The doctors with their medications can't help us. The clergymen can, can help us up to a point. They can guide us, but they don't know where we've been. There's no identification there. The only person that can help us, that give us the courage to continue this fight, to continue the battle, the hardest thing we've ever done is to get sober, is another drunk, is another little dope fiend. We don't have enough out there in the trench doing the work. We got thousands of alcoholics all over the world sitting in stupid open discussion meetings talking about their days, thinking they're helping. They are not. They are taking up a seat. They are misrepresenting the program to the newcomer. We are a fellowship of men and women in action. We are a spiritual program of men and women in action. When the hell did we stop being a spiritual program and started being a stupid self-help program? And Alcoholics Anonymous sat on its ass and allowed it to happen. Shame on us. Only game in town. And people will roll their eyes and laugh about that old Chris Raymer. He got on a tear tonight. You sit there and watch a man die of in-stage alcoholism. As he evacuates from every hole. You sit there and watch the families go down the toilet with us. And the only person that could have helped that person. Was the people like you and like me. And every one of us comes into this program believing that we can't help anybody. And we're encouraged to believe that. By people that should know better and don't. You stand for something. You've got everything you need to know. Everything you need to help another alcoholic. It's called experience. And this information. And all we got to do is walk lockstep together. The book says shoulder to shoulder and help the newcomer get well. That's all we got to do. That's all you're being asked to do. We got too many people that have backed off, folks. We got too many people that have, that have, that have advocated their position in our fellowships. The old timers, they, they look the other way while the newcomers come in. They don't give us the guidance sometimes that we need. What's, what's up with this? The book says a price has got to be paid. Let's work the steps and let's turn around and try to help some people. Our success rates suck. They're not what they used to be. Why? Because the fellowship has changed, folks. We've gotten away from the idea that this is more than fellowship. It's a program. It's a program of action. Let's reach out and grab some newcomers, guys. Let's go like, like Chris was talking about last night. Let's go, let's go troll for some drunks. Let's go find some cats. They're all banged up. 
And it's like, it's, it's just a simple process. Grab them. Hey, buddy, would you like to change? Would you like to, would you like to see something? Tell them your story. Let them to know a little bit about your life and about how your life has changed. And about the time that they get ready, it's like we were, you know, you're fishing, brother. And they look up and say, yeah, how did you do that? You mean you don't want to drink anymore? No, sure don't. How did you do it? <laughs> Set the hook. Set the hook. And then don't tell them something stupid like, well, I went to a lot of meetings. <laughs> Say, I found a, a higher power. I found a, a thing called a spiritual experience that changed my life forever. And if you'd like to, I can show you how to do it. And i got to tell you now, any of you old timers in here that are carrying big books and taking it, taking some grief for it, thank you for continuing to do it. You guys that have been around a few years and have stayed in the trench and, and, and kept it real, for the newcomer, men and women, young and old, black and white. If I can ever do anything to repay my debt to you, l let me know. Because we need you in this fellowship. And you little new guys coming on, we're pulling you with a vision. Because we need you desperately to help us. All hands on deck. Thank you very much. Okay, we got a few minutes left here. My name is Chris, and I am an alcoholic. Hey, Chris. Wow, thanks, Chris. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> um, you know, every single problem that's in Alcoholics Anonymous today can be solved by one thing. Adequate sponsorship. So often, so often we... We forget our role as a sponsor, as someone who's supposed to adequately present the program of recovery to the newcomer. And we get caught up in a lot of other things. I mean, I, you know, I came up in an Alcoholics Anonymous where uh, all kinds of crazy things happened. Uh, it, was, it was very common to ask somebody to sponsor you, and they say, sure, I'll sponsor you. And really what you were getting was a chip giver, Yeah, you know. Now, now, there was a lot of people back in the day who goes, I've got to get a sponsor pretty soon. I'm about to celebrate 90 days, and I need somebody to give me a chip. I, you know, just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, uh, and today, you know, I take, I take my responsibility very, very seriously uh, as, as a sponsor. And, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes as a sponsor. Um, I've made practically everyone you can, but you know what? If you want to really learn learn something, you know, you know, you 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 teach it. So if you really want to learn how to practice the principles uh, in all your affairs, if you really want to learn how to go through the steps uh, mm. and to live a a, a real quality uh, a recovered life, help somebody else do it. You, you know. Um, they learn this in martial arts. They learn it in academia. You know, the first thing they do with somebody who's really, really good is they put them in charge of a class or they, they have them start to teach. So if you really want to, uh, if you really want to do the absolute best you can uh, in, this, uh, in this program, which will be directly proportional to your quality of life, um, start, to, uh, start to help other people live, uh, live, live quality lives. Um, and again, you know, um, sometimes there's a sometimes there's a piece of, of mentoring that needs to happen. Uh, we, we can get somebody through the steps very very quickly, and they're still going to have some some problems with with some areas of their life. And if we've got experience with it, we can share that experience with them. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to share our opinions. Uh, Chris was talking about it before. Well, you know, the IRS is after me. They're, they're going to impound everything. What do you think I should do? Well, I don't know. I'd tell them what to, what to do with, uh, you know, their, their letter. I mean, well, have you ever, you know, had an IRS on it? Well, no, but, you know, here's what I would do. You know, get them to somebody who's had experience with that. Uh, 
and really try to share try to share your experience and and, and not your opinions. Um, so often in the early days of AA that I experienced, uh, what you were getting was you were getting opinions. You were getting people's twisted philosophy. You know, this is what I think, uh, and you know that doesn't really that doesn't really do anybody any good. And another thing is is definitely share in meetings appropriately. You know, share responsibly. I really try I really try to do that and. Uh, I really try to emulate the, the guys that I work with to, to do that. Uh, you know, I, I don't want my guys updating the meeting on the drama du jour. You, you know, like, well, anybody who was here last week, uh, you know, knows about the problem with Aunt Fanny and Uncle Fudd. Uh, let, let me tell you the new, here's the new news on that. And, uh, you know, come on. Come on, share, share. You know, share what it was like, what happened, what it's like now. Share your experience. Share about uh, share about the amazing experience of recovery. You know, you don't need to sugarcoat that. A spiritual awakening is an absolutely amazing thing. I mean, I'm not even the type of person I would have liked when I first got sober today. I have been so changed. You know, I'm I'm the type of person now. Like if I was new, I'd be going, "Who's that asshole up there?" You know. Uh, but my, but my, li- you know, my life is really, is really, uh, you know, burning on a, on a lot of cylinders. I had no cylinders going. I, I gotta tell you, you know, when I came, when I came into, when I came into AA, I was living at home with mom. You know, that, that's where you go if you're like a macho kind of guy, like, you know, and what happens is the cops are after you in another state and you have to flee to avoid prosecution and, uh, and you think that mom might need some help around the house, you know. So, so you move home with mom, and uh, you know I I had had a horrible series of uh, of of uh, relationships with with women. Uh, they they went downhill fast, and I you know I was really wondering why this was. Uh, you know my my last girlfriend when I was drinking I met through a prison pen pal thing, and. Uh, <laughs> If you're newer coming back, I don't recommend that as a dating method. It, there were horrible consequences as a result, uh, uh, you know, uh, and I could I could get into that, but I won't. Uh, you know, so, and I had I had terrible jobs. I mean, you know, I had the type of jobs where uh, I was 32 years old to, and, and I was an electrician and I was a really bad one. And I, and I was, I was, oh, you know, that's a bad trade to, to be in when you shake a lot. Uh, and, it, you know, I was so, I was so just not able to deal with anything that I'm 32 years old. The, the guy that was in charge of me, my foreman was 19. Take care of Chris today, you know, keep him from lighting anything on fire. And, uh, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna come into, I'm gonna come into AA, and in a month, I'm gonna give you opinions on how you, you know, how you should handle all your affairs. Oh my God, you know. <laughs> uh, and I did, you know, because I, because I, <laughs> you know, one guy, one guy goes, well, well, I'll stop over your mom's house later, and we'll finish this up, you know. I, what I should be doing. So, you know, but listen, but listen, you know, you, you, you are, you are the only expert. You're the only witness. You're the only witness out there to, to carry the message of a recovery from alcoholism. This, this illness, I said it a hundred times. It's so unorthodox. It's so misunderstood that, you know, you're, you're in real trouble and you just don't know where to turn. You don't even know what's wrong, let alone you don't know where to turn. But, but if you're armed with the facts about yourself and, you're, and you've had a spiritual awakening, you know, you are, you are quite possibly the only salvation for somebody uh, to, to, help, to, to help save somebody's life. You're like the only conduit to a way that works. And we need to take responsibility for it. The, the worst thing, you know, there's a lot of bad things that have happened in Alcoholics, Al- Alcoholics Anonymous. The worst is the apathy that has just pervaded this fellowship to the point where we just don't want to get involved. Mm. 
There really are meetings where all that happens is people show up once a week and it's like the Rotary Club or something and they say hi and they get coffee and they talk a little bit and see you next week. And, uh, and, there's just, and if a newcomer comes in, they don't know what to do with them. They're like, oh my God, they're, this, guy, this guy's drinking. <laughs> Let, I was I was involved in a meeting. I was involved in a meeting, and this was this is this is hard. It was a Thursday night meeting in in our area, and I I had only like six months when this happened. I just I was watching it, and I didn't really understand, but I understand today. There was this meeting, which was a it was a maintenance meeting, you know, for really the the heavy drinkers, and and, and you know they would get there and they would share their opinions about the step, go around the room and share their opinions about the steps, and. Uh, and this one guy, this one, this one old guy, uh, he had relapsed. He'd been around a long time, but he got, he got hit with the, with the painkiller medication because he'd had some operations. Man, that takes so many of us out. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had drank and he had had throat cancer. So they had put the hole right here. And he was pouring the bottle of whiskey down the hole in his throat when a couple of guys did the 12 step call on him and got him and brought him out and brought him to a meeting. They brought this guy in and he sat down and he was so grateful that a couple of guys cared enough to show up at his house, you know. And he was sitting in the meeting and he was thinking, he was drunk and he was thinking everybody that was sharing was kind of sharing for him. And they kind of were. So he was like mumbling and making spouting noises and stuff. And everybody, everybody gets really upset in this meeting. And after the meeting, they had a group conscience about what to do with drunk people coming into the meeting. Can you imagine? Should we let drunk people in? Because he disturbed the tranquility of the meeting. Where have we gone? You know, what, what have we become? I mean, how do you do something like that? That was, you know, that was the last time, uh, that was the last time I think I, I, I went to that meeting. That was, that was horrific. And, and I didn't know a lot at six months, but I knew that that was wrong because where else, where else are you going to, are you going to bring somebody? Who else is going to be able to help? It's the last road. Alcoholics Anonymous is, is the last road. You know, we've got top heavy. Uh, with procedures and, you know, I, I, I know that the traditions are very, very important. And, uh, you know, I'm all for that and I know the concepts. And, but I think we've got top heavy with m lots and lots of minutia that keeps us away from the vital functioning of our fellowship, which is really about the adequate presentation of the 12 steps, the teaching and the practice of the 12 steps. There's a lot of things out there that are more comfortable to us to do than the teaching and practice of the 12 steps. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know, I, listen, I started to take a lot of heat. I, I, I was, I had a spiritual awakening as the result of the steps. And, uh, and so there was some, some circumstances that happened and I, and I started a big book meeting and I started to share about the experience of the steps in, in my area you know, back when, you know, it was, it was politically incorrect to talk about recovery in AA. You know, it's, there's still places where that's politically incorrect, if you can imagine. But I got a lot of flack. I got, I got a lot of flack. You know, I got branded kind of a heretic. And uh, Mary Beth and I lost about 80% of our friends when, when we started the Big Book Group. You know, who are these people to think that they know more than we do? You know, who, what are they doing over there? You know, they've got the big book. <laughs> you know, I swear that's the way it was. And uh, and uh, you know, I'd love to say that I went in absolutely fearlessly and just did this like you know, like a like a like a soldier and everything. But it, but I, I had a lot of I had a lot of problems doing this. There was a lot of conflict going on in my head about this, you know, like, like, you know, is this, there's, there's something like really wrong here. And, but it, it, it got to the point where the people that were working with us were getting better and the people that, you know, and there, and there was areas that, that weren't, I'll give you, I'm going to end with, uh, with one story. And this happened last week. You know, there's an individual in our area who is pro if there's, if there's, uh, 
an extreme. You know, Chris is the extreme over here with the recovery program. There's an extreme at the other end. You know, there's this guy. And, you know, I like him. He's, he's, a, he's a sweet guy and everything. But, you know, he basically says every time he shares, today's the best day of my life because I didn't take a drink. And then he talks about, you know, his, his whatever challenges he had that day. And I don't even know that he's doing this on purpose, but what he's basically saying is, I'm one of the people who makes a choice every day not to drink, and I'm a winner. And that, that's probably at the direct polar opposite of, of where I am. And he wouldn't darken the door of any of the, any of the Bernersville meetings or anything. That, that, you know, just wouldn't. I get a call from him, uh, and he starts talking about his kid is in trouble. You know, like it, it's just it's just unbelievable. I mean, think about that. Like his kid's in trouble, so he'll call me. Uh, there are people out there that know that carrying the message of recovery and working the twelve steps is the way to go, but for one reason or not or, or another, it's inconvenient. Or it's not fun, or, or they're lazy, or it's just easier to go to a closed-minded discussion meeting and share. It's just easier. Mm. You don't have to get as involved. And, and I, think, I think that when you do that, what I think you're doing is you're, you're, uh, you're turning your back on the gift, you know, uh, the gift of recovery. Mm. And I really hope that, uh, that I, never, I never do that. I hope I never get to the point where where I'm going to turn my back on on this uh, this the spiritual life because it's it's absolutely better than anything I could I could have ever imagined. I, I mean, the best thing I think about it all is just how comfortable I am now with the world. I'm okay with the world like in every way. You know, I'm okay with everything. Anyway, um, we're going to finish up. <laughs> We're going to finish up. I'm getting signals. Um, we're going to finish up. We're going to be back here tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. Is that what it is? Okay, we're going to be back here at 9 o'clock in the morning. We're going to do two more sessions. We're going to get you out of here. I'm having a great time this weekend. Thank you all for, for being here.